Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, and uh, I'm going to start my point of order uh, at referencing the second supplemental question to, uh, from the member uh, for Edmonton Decor. Um, and I'm going to start with uh, House of Commons Procedure and Practice, third edition, 2017, uh, on uh, page 497. There's a very, I think, important quote from Speaker James Jerome. It says, the essence of Parliament is government account if sorry let me start again mr speaker if the essence of government of parliament is government accountability then surely the essence of accountability is the question period in the canadian house of commons now the reason i quote that mr speaker is that that the role of private members in this assembly is to hold the government accountable and when i explain to my uh, constituents what quote unquote government is i explain that it's the front bench of the uh, assembly and each of us as private members whether we're on the government side or whether we're on the opposition side, has a solemn duty to hold government to account. Their job as private members on the government side is not to hold the official opposition to account. Now, I am no great affinity for the uh, policies of the official opposition, such as they are. I don't know many of them yet, but we'll leave that aside for another day. Uh, but regardless of that, Mr. Speaker, I, I will quote a couple of uh, a couple things here from uh, from Bo Shane's. Uh, if, we, uh, if we go to um, section 410, uh, in 1986, uh, the Speaker put forth views uh, in light of recent conditions and precedents of what uh, uh, question period ought to be and the role of oil qu uh, oral questions. Of course, noting that time is scarce, uh, section 3, 410, 3, 410 sub 5, the primary purchase, purpose of question period is the seeking of information and calling the government to account, and 410 sub 10. The subject matter of questions must be within the collective responsibility of government and the individual responsibilities of ministers. Um, if I turn now again to uh, House of Commons procedure and practice, uh, page uh, 508, um, uh, the, uh, in talking about the principles and guidelines for oral questions, uh, it says here, uh, chapter 11, uh, page 508, while there may be other purposes and ambitions involved in question period, its primary purpose must be the seeking of information from government and calling the government to account for its actions. Um, and uh, I, I certainly could, could go on, uh, and Mr. Speaker, but uh, this, this point, and, and you'll, 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 uh, you'll remember uh, that uh, on two occasions that I can recall very fondly, I will add, uh, December 5th, 2016, uh, you made a ruling on page uh, uh, 2281 of uh, uh, Alberta Hansard, uh, and again on page 1612 of Alberta Hansard, October 30th, 2017, when I raised this issue of puffball questions. And at the time, you, you cautioned the government because those questions strayed into the territory of, let's call it, an exuberant celebration of the wonderful things that government has alleged to have done. Uh, and while you found at that time there was no point of order because you, I think rightly, uh, much as I uh, find puffball questions to be disagreeable, uh, uh, said that you know we ought to have the greatest possible latitude in asking questions in this house. And I, I, I would agree with that. But uh, if I look at Erskine May, uh, on page 363, Erskine May, 24th edition, page 363 on chapter 13, and I do think this is probably the essential point here, given the question that Edmonton Decor asked. Section 13 says, questions are out of order if they relate to opposition party policies rather than to government responsibilities. And the question that was asked as, as the second supplemental by Edmonton Decor was, Mr. Speaker, can, or, uh, can, can the minister tell us what dastardly things would happen as a result of this official opposition's policies should we all have the tremendous misfortune of, of, uh, of, of having them as our government? Now, that may not be a direct quote, because I do not have the blues in front of me, but I would suggest that is broadly the, uh, thematically what uh, the member was asking, and I would ask, please, that you find there is a point of order and that the government uh, backbench refrain from asking such questions in the future. Thank you. Remember, to the last uh, uh, quote that you indicated, what was the uh, what was the uh, the source? Uh, the source is uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The source is Erskine May, uh, Parliamentary Practice, 24th edition, page 363, uh, pe chapter uh, or a, a bullet uh, subheading 13. Questions are out of order if they relate to opposition party policies rather than to the government's responsibilities. The Honourable Government. Thank you very much, seated. Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Member put a great deal of effort there uh, in uh, researching his uh, point of order. Um, 
he might have saved himself the trouble, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm glad that he understands uh, the difference uh, between questions that he considers puffballs, which are requests for information from, from the government, and questions which attempt to hold the opposition to account, which are clearly not in order, Mr. Speaker. Accordingly, uh, the third uh, question, the second supplemental, rather, um, is the opposition has put forward their own ideas on how to manage the economy. Can the Economic Development Minister tell us what their plan would mean for Alberta jobs and workers? This is clearly attempting to get the Minister to comment on uh, policy of the opposition and is not a request for information with respect to government policy. Therefore, I concede the point of order and I will uh, undertake to discuss this with our members and the staff that support them.